I was asked this yesterday, um, so I wanted to uh, make an announcement. Announcement is oversetting it. Um, the tutoring center in the library does have math majors who have taken this course before, and it can provide tutoring in this course if anybody wants it. Is the announcement if you wanted to call it that? And uh, now that's get into our final integration by hand technique. It's the final technique, but at least in my opinion, it's by no means the hardest technique. This is just my personal thoughts, but I think um, trigonometric substitution is the hard, sort of the hardest technique. So hopefully partial fractions will be a little relaxing after that. Um, let's start with an integral that does not require partial fractions. Let's say we have an integral and we have maybe a constant to divided by three x minus one. <clears throat> So we have a constant over a linear expression here. A constant over a linear expression. We can always integrate to these. And in particular, we can always integrate them as a U substitution, letting U be the linear expression. So let's take a look. I've made this claim, but no, no reason to act as if we have finite whiteboard space and crunch things at the bottom will go to a new frame. So what happens if we let you be this linear expression? What happens if we let you be three X minus one? Then du is three dx. And depending on how your algebra is, it might be helpful or it might not, depending again on your algebra, to rewrite this integral a little. That two and come down like so. And I think that can be helpful to emphasize what's going on here. We've got one divided by u, and this two dx isn't quite du, but it's close to being a du. If instead of a two, we had a three, then this would be du. Of course, we don't have a three, we have a two, so it isn't quite 
but this is something we've dealt with many times by now, probably dozens of times by now in the core. So we hopefully know the deal. If we want a missing constant, if we want a three, we'll just put a three in, and we'll also put a one third in. We don't want to change the integral. Then this two and this one third are constants. They come out. And we have two thirds, the integral one divided by three X minus one is one divided by U. Three DX is a DU. And this is a very important integral. This is the natural logarithm. In fact, I'd go so far as to say one of the most important integrals. Um, the integral of one over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And u is 3x minus 1. So two thirds, the natural log of three X minus one plus C. And this, uh, this method we used, this substitution, as I say, always works when we have an integral of this specific form, a constant over a linear expression. So we're going to use this kind of as the basis of this new integration technique integration by partial fractions, which now that I think about it, I'm sort of conflating this with integration by parts. You wouldn't really call it that. The proper title of this technique is partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition can be quite complicated, but um, my philosophy here, I think, is that we'll learn to do simple partial fraction decompositions and leave the really complicated ones for the computers. So let's introduce partial fraction decomposition as a technique for integrating the following integral was. We've got a linear expression over a quadratic expression. And what's more, we are going to put a restriction on this quadratic expression. We are going to say that this quadratic expression factors. 
That is, we can write this as the product of two linear expressions. This is obviously a sort of specialized situation, but hopefully before the break, we'll have the opportunity to show an example of this. There are real world integrals that look like this. They show up in, oh, in population dynamics, for example. If you've got an animal species and you're trying to predict whether it will go extinct or not, integrals like this show up. So they are something we see in the real world, and they're something we can deal with using this technique, this partial fraction decomposition. And I guess we should just, uh, just rush in and show the technique. So the word decomposition should um, give the idea of stuff breaking apart, like a log decomposes as it comes into pieces over time. And that's precisely what we have here. We have a breaking apart. I am going to claim that if we have this situation, a linear expression divided by a fact third quadratic, this breaks apart in the following way. It's some number divided by the first factor, thus, another number divided by the second factor. <laughs> and that is an example of a partial fraction decomposition. I'm not sure what the word Partial signifies in that phrase, but fraction decomposition makes sense. We're taking this fraction and we're breaking it up as the sum of two smaller fractions. And from a up to this point of view, the point of all of this is supposed to want to integrate that expression on the left. Well, if we can want to integrate the expression on the left and we can rewrite that expression like so, then we can try to integrate the expression on the right instead. Well, the integral of a sum is the sum of an integral. So we can break this integral on the left into two integrals on the right. And when you say it like that, it sounds like we're making things worse because now we have two integrals instead of one. But both these integrals on the right are of the, in the form we were just talking about. 
there are a number over a linear expression, and we can integrate both those using U substitution. So the idea behind this partial fraction decomposition is to go from a complex fraction to the sum of simple fractions. And I guess the um the question that's crying out for an answer is all right, but how do you would do this? I mean, I have claimed that if we have this linear over a quadratic expression, we can rewrite it like this, but how do we do that? And I'm going to illustrate this method with an example. Let's say that we have, we won't even uh, write integral signs down. Let's just say we have a linear expression over a factored quadratic expression. And our goal is to perform this decomposition. We claim that we can rewrite this as a number divided by that first factor plus another number divided by that second factor. So how are we going to go about doing this? Um, and the technique actually, it's kind of funny. Well, maybe funny is stretching it, but we learn, okay, here's partial fraction decomposition. And then we get this second named technique. What am I doing, my spelling, as part of this partial fraction decomposition, we're going to use what's called the heavy side method. If that name looks vaguely familiar, it's because we talked a little about the heavy side function way back in math 151. And the heavy side method has a few steps. Step one is to take this equality as a given. This equality is real. There is a value of A and B that makes this equality true. We're just looking for A and looking for B. And step one is to multiply both sides of this equality by 
the factored food product. So in this case, we're going to multiply top and bottom both sides of that equality by x minus two times x minus one. And when we do that, or I don't switch examples on you midway through the stream. So when we do that, what happens? Well, on the left, we're taking this fraction and we're multiplying by the denominator. So on the left, these x minus twos are going to cancel and these x minus ones are going to cancel and we're just going to be left with the x plus three. On the right, Okay, we've got A divided by X minus two, and we're multiplying this by the product X minus two times X minus one. And we've got B, divided by x minus one. And we're multiplying that by the product x minus two times x minus one. And again, cancellation happens. This x minus two and this x minus two cancel. This x minus one and that x minus one cancel. So almost everything I have written on the whiteboard cancels. On the left, everything but x plus three vanishes. On the right, we've got an a times an x minus one, and we've got a b times an x minus two. And everything else has canceled away. Questions so far? Then we're going to use this to find A and to find B. Let me copy it on the next frame. X plus three equals A times X minus one. Plus B times X minus two. And that's a lot of work that we've done, but it's only step one of this heavy side method. We've multiplied both sides by the factor quadratic. So 
step two is to select X values that turn the linear expressions to zero. And let's see, that's probably not very clear as it's written on the board. Let's see if, if we can clarify it. We've got a linear expression here, an x minus one. And we've got a linear expression there, an x minus two. And if we selected x equals one, that would make this first expression zero because one minus one is zero. And if we selected x equals two, that would make this second linear expression be zero. Two minus two is zero. So is it clear to everyone where the numbers one and zero come from? Another way of saying this, remember that we started with a quadratic. So another way of saying this, two and one are the roots of the quadratic. Finally, this is really two steps. We're going to plug those X values in um into that and who this is so many steps but what what good is this doing us now I think when we do this, we're going to see. So let's take this x plus three equals a times x minus one plus b times x minus two. And let's take one of these x values, x equals one, and let's plug it into this equation and see what happens. One plus three is four. On the right, one minus one is zero. Thus, one minus two is negative one. And you see four equals 
negative b plugging this x value in enables us to find one of these constants. Plugging in x equals one allowed us to solve for b. And if we plug in x equals two, on the left, five, two plus three is five. On the right, two minus one is one. So one times a, Two minus two is zero, so zero times B. Zero times B is zero, and five equals A. And we have solved for A and B. And X plus three over X minus two times X minus one equals, okay, so we know A and we know B. What role were these things playing? A was over the X minus two. So five over X minus two. And the B was over the other expression. So negative four. <laughs> over x minus one. And that, um, obviously, a lot of steps. I think that the individual steps are at least easier than in the stuff we were doing Monday and Tuesday, but that is a partial fraction decomposition. And again, the point of partial fraction decompositions from a calculus point of view is suppose we wanted to integrate this expression. Well, just looking at it, none of our integration techniques seem to work here. Um, this doesn't look like a U substitution. I mean, there's no composition. I don't know what you that U would be. It doesn't look at all like integration by parts. It's division, not multiplication. There are no trig expressions, so it's not a trigonometric integral, and there are no square roots, so this doesn't look like a um, trigonometric substitution. So just looking at it as it is, we don't have any way of taking this integral. But if we can take this fraction and break it up well now we have two integrals which might at first blush seem uh seem like it's made things worse, 
but each of these integrals we can take. Um, an integral of this form can always be computed with a U substitution. And in fact, this and these particular integrals are very nice. Um, in both of these particular cases, du equals dx. So we're not missing any constants. And this first integral is going to be five times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus two. The second integral is going to be minus four times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus one. And then we've got a constant of integration. So we increased the number of integrals, but each of the integrals we got was much simpler to deal. Yes, definitely a worthwhile trade-off. Let's see, we have about 13 minutes left. Why don't we spend that? Because those Frig substitu um, substitution problems were so long, we didn't really have the opportunity to do any sort of in-class exercises. But why don't we attempt the heavy side method. And I'll go ahead and tell you how that denominator factors since we only have 12 minutes. It's x plus one over x minus one. That is to say, this is x minus one times x plus one. And why don't you attempt the heavy side method and see if you can find A and B for me. Check our work before we go. If we multiply both left and right by that, we get two X plus five equals A times x minus one plus b times x plus one. And then the values of x, x equals one, we'll make that expression zero x equals negative one, we'll make that expression zero. So we let x be one, we get seven equals, this turns to zero, two would be, so b is a fraction, seven halves, which is perfectly fine. I mean, it's a little, it's a little ugly, but it's perfectly fine for A or B to be fractions. And if we let X be negative one, this is five minus two. So three equals Negative one minus one is negative two A. And A I make to be negative three 
halves. And again, it's perfectly fine and in fact expected to have these improper fractions of fractions when we do partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so from my perspective, this is the important case, because from my perspective, I mean, as a working mathematician, this is the only case I do by hand. But um, there are more complicated sort of partial fraction decompositions. So since we do have tomorrow, um, and I have nothing else planned for the week, we can just look tomorrow what happens if we have a quadratic over a cubic or a quadratic over another quadratic, stuff like that. Um, you'll get the, it's certainly my plan to get the quizzes slash homework up tonight. I mean, it's going to be a busy day because it's also my plan to get your tests graded. But if all goes well, that will go up tonight. I will see you tomorrow.